Good evening, everybody. Uh, like, like my last uh, speaker, I am also the last, in, last minute inclusion into the group. My name you'll not find on the printed list which you've got. So, but I am sure that all of you have shown a lot of patience till now, and I promise you to make it fast, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to take too much of your time, because I know everybody wants to leave now. It's been a long day. So the last so, <laughs> <laughs> so my work, which I'm going to present here, is the synthesis, biological evaluation, and 3D QSCR of some novel benzimidazole derivatives as antimicrobial compounds. Uh, I, as it's there in the slide, I've come from Bangalore, India. I belong to an institute which is Kripanidhi College of Pharmacy. So basically, I'm a medicinal chemist or a, and a pharmacist. So benzimidazole is a group of uh, heterocyclic compounds which uh, have biological activity and uh, they have significant value to medicinal chemists. In the light of the affinity of the, in the light of affinity that these benzimidazole derivatives they show towards the enzymes and the protein receptors, they have been classified as a privileged substructure for the drug designing. Benzimidazole derivatives have exhibited a large uh, number of activities like anti-HIV, anti-cancer, anti-hypertensive, anti-bacterial, enthelmintic, analgesic, and all these categories you will find drugs which have the benzimidazole nucleus in them. Some examples are lycomiprazole, lezenzaprazole, albendazole. These three, uh, the first two are uh, proton pump inhibitors. Albendazole is an enthelmintic. Then bendamustin and dovetinib, these are anti-cancer drugs. Atacanet and micardis, these are antihypertensive. Nexium is against anti-secretory drug. And vermox is an enthelmintic. So the work uh, I'm going to present is divided into three parts. First is the synthesis, then the antimicrobial screening, and the 3D QSCR. So coming to the synthesis, uh, the kind of compounds we have synthesized, we started with the aniline derivatives. Then, okay, we have uh, started with the aniline, very substituted aniline derivatives, protected the amino group, and then did the nitration of this ring. Thereafter, we deprotected the amino group. And the next step is the reduction of the nitro to amino, and then cyclization of the ring. After that, the various, um, uh, this, these are the, this is a pyridine derivative, two, methyl, uh, two methylene chloride pyridine derivative were fused with this ring, which was uh, synthesized in the last slide, and we have got a variety of compounds which are benzimidazole derivatives. So I'll skip this. This is the characterization of the compounds. So they have been characterized using the IR, NMR, C13, and all those things. So these are the various compounds, if you see, the different derivatives which have been synthesized. I'll skip this. Okay, coming to the biological evaluation. The antimicrobial screening was done using the uh, agar media, and it was a disc diffusion method which was used. Disc diffusion method is you take a disc, you dip it into the different concentration of your compound which you want to test, and in an agar medium, you put the, your microorganism and let it grow. Uh, you incubate it and let it grow. After 24 hours, see if you see this kind of a inhib is a <coughs> you can see the zone of inhibition around here where there is no growth of the microorganism. So this way you can calculate the MIC of the compounds. So we have taken two gram positive and two gram negative bacteria for this. So these are the various concentration against which they were tested, 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100, because we were not sure how active the compounds are going to be, using ciprofloxacin as a standard. So these are the results for the Bacillus subtilis, E. coli, so some of the compounds have not shown any activity at all against some of the bacteria. Then P. arginosa, these are the activity. So if you see the overall activity of gram positive and gram negative, so 10 microgram per ml is the, is the MIC for these compounds for S. aureus and septalis, whereas the gram negative bacteria 
a few have shown around 10 microgram per ml, the other have shown at a higher uh, concentration the activity, which is not a good sign. The ciprofloxacin has shown at around 0.5 microgram per ml. So after this, uh, doing all this thing, the third part is the QSAR. In the QSAR, we have uh, made a 3D QSAR using a topomer compa technology, which is technology provided by Tripos. So in topomer compa, uh, we now this QSAR was not performed on the compounds which we have synthesized. This QSAR we have developed with the two purpose. Like first thing is we wanted to develop a QSAR model for such kind of a drug, uh, such kind of a series, and test our synthesized compound on that QSCR model. Whatever we have synthesized in the previous slides, all these compounds, we wanted to test it on the QSCR model. So to ask to see, uh, so how good is the QSCR model? So for that, the compounds which we have taken to develop the QSCR model were again in-house models, which were synthesized earlier in our labs. And those models, they do not contain benzimidazole nucleus, they contain benz isoxazole nucleus. So the, it served dual purpose. One is the formation of QSAR. The other one is we want to see whether the replacement of one of the heterocyclic atom by the other heterocyclic atom, does the model hold true or not? So that was the purpose. So these were the compounds which were taken for the QSAR studies. And after the studies, uh, what basically this topoban compa does is it uh, separates out your basic nucleus and it takes up the fragments and it uh, tries to perform a QSCR on the fragments of those. So the fragment, uh, we don't define it, we just define it that how many fragments we want in our molecule. The fragment is taken automatically by the software. So it, it was divided into R1, R2, and R3. Three fragments were used, but the best models in all the studies were found in R1 fragment. So these are the color-coded ones. This green shows that the steer, if you have a steric group at this position, you will have a good activity. Whereas the yellow one will have a bad effect on, if you have a steric group at this position, will have a bad, <coughs> excuse me, will have a bad effect on the activity. Similarly, electrostatic, if you see the electrostatic forces, how they behave, this red color means if you have a positive electrostatic molecule here, electronegative molecule, then you, it will be bad for the activity, whereas the negative will be good for the activity. So this way, the various, uh, this is the uh, QSR model for the E. coli. This is the same QSCR model uh, for P. arginosa and for S. aureus, this is the model. So based on these models, so this is the statistical significance of the model. There are R square, Q square, R square standard error, Q square standard error, and the intercept values are given in this table. They have shown good reliability. R square and Q square is okay in a good range. Not an excellent, but it is, it is in a good range. These are the graphical representation of the results. Then uh, we validated these using some test compounds, whatever we have got. So these are the experimental values, because since they, these were all in-house compounds we had synthesized earlier in our labs, we have done the experiment, uh, experimental activity of those, antimicrobial activity of those compounds. So these are the experimental values and these are the predicted values by the model, which are quite comparable, if you see, <coughs> in most of the in instances. And this is, these are the values for each model. This is for model one and three, we have taken the same test compounds. And for model two, we have taken the different test compounds. Now, what we had synthesized earlier, the benzimidazole uh, derivatives, those derivatives were then uh, subjected to this prediction by using the QSCR models. And these are the experimental activity and the predicted activities. So as you can see, it is almost comparable, if not equivalent. It's almost comparable. So by this, we can have some confidence on our models, and we can try to uh, design some new uh, molecules which may show good activity. And depending on the, uh, the 
different uh, electrostatic and steric factors which we have got in the model, we have tried to design uh, these molecules. And the synthesis of this is, uh, is under uh, progress in the labs. This is the predicted activity which we have got, and we'll see after synthesis like how much we are getting, actually. So I would like to thank Vishwa Prakash. She was the student, Preeti GB. She's my colleague and Government of India for the research grant and Institute of Microbial Technology for the strains. And I would like to thank the organizers here for giving me the opportunity to come here and present the work. Thank you. Uh, questions? Just a short question. Thank you for your presentation. What's the purity of your compounds, of your synthesized compounds? Uh, we have not done HPLC as such, but no. NMR and all, they are showing quite clear peaks. Yeah, but you have a range of uh, uh, melting points which are yeah, incredibly that's high. So how come you are, you, you are using uh, such compounds for all the things that you have uh, been saying? Uh, if you don't have any guarantee of the purity of, compa of the compounds. But the range is not very high. Well, yeah. some of them have four degrees range in the, in the... Okay, four degrees range is there, yeah, at some places. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, thank you for the presentation. Um, question about um, these benzimidazoles as a potential uh, um, antibiotics, uh, how, what, what would be the mode of action? So which uh, part of the bacteria would they, um, uh, let's say, be acting on? The enzyme you mean? Yeah, Where the enzyme or the cell wall biosynthesis. Which, what's the mode of action? Is that uh, known? Uh, that we have not studied as such, but if we get a good activity, then we can go into the mechanism part of it also. And I have another question, if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman. So in the, in the beginning, you said um, these benzimidazoles have a lot of uh, different, uh, let's say, um, uh, uses, activities, activities yeah. privileged structures. Yeah. So what about then the selectivity of these compounds? So if they are good for everything, uh, <laughs> No, but we have a number of drugs which are benzimidazole derivative and are they were doing good in the market. All your omeprazole and all those things. Uh, thank you for your uh, presentation. And uh, I'd like to ask about the how many compounds did you use in order to build your CAMFA model? Uh, we used around uh, 35 compounds. 35 compounds, and you don't have the IC50s? IC50s you don't have. MICs we have. So you, you depended on the MIC? Yeah. And is that uh, acceptable? I think so. All right. <laughs> Scott? <coughs> Hi, my, my question is very simple. Yeah. That is, you have, uh, when you made your comparisons, you had five significant places. Pardon? You, when, you, when you made your comparisons, your numbers had five significant places. Why did you, do you really have five significant places of, to, to evaluate the data at five significant places? Or what is, what is the validity of those numbers in terms of statistics? Well, in other I words, it, is it too, do you have really just only two significant figures or three or four in the numbers that you show? I didn't get what's your the question. What's the significance of using five numbers? Of Does structure? it have any statistical validity? Of the structures you're talking? Yeah, in, in your comparisons at the end. These are the predicted. I know, but you have four or five significant mm -hmm. figures. These are based on the different uh, steric and electrostatic no, but groups. You but you, your, da your data can't have that high of significance. Actually, here I would recommend you to do bootstrapping. Maybe we can talk about okay. that. Okay, sure. 
So I, I have been dealing with this, and we are going to publish a manuscript about estimating errors. And the easy way of doing it is just to run a bootstrapping on your data to get the error range, how uh, sure you are that that number is correct. So you get a range plus minus. So that will help you to reduce the number of significant figures. Okay, thank you. So uh, uh, I would like to ask uh, all the presenters uh, to come to the front to receive your certificate before you go to the social hour.